I've already apologised to some people, but uh, I had two and a half hours sleep. I was stuck on a ferry, so anyone who runs uh, ships, uh, uh, <laughs> I have a personal grudge there. Um, despite the, the hot weather in the UK, I had to, I'm actually in the Hebrides where there was storm force gales, and uh, so uh, I literally uh, left my car on an island, took public transport to get here, got home, filled my bag and was straight on a plane, which meant at 2.30 last night I was uh, finishing off the presentation. So uh, I apologise for any errors that might be there, but um, I'm not much more interested in talking about it. Um, Thank you very much for the coffee. It was a life save. Just a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been in the food and drinks industry for 30 plus years. I started in a manufacturing role um, with blue chip organisations. Um, did a period of consultancy which involved audit for leading British supermarkets. And I did a lot of work with the United Nations, uh, working with manufacturers and governments. Um, and, and, and seeing a different perspective. I've worked one way or the other, either as a subcontractor or as an employee of Bureau Veritas for about 12 years, um, and I've been in current role for about two years. I'm responsible for food and drink businesses, which includes packaging, logistics companies, so Kuna and I have been actually one of our customers. Um, I haven't been to any diary sites myself. Um, Bureau Veritas, a lot of people know the name, um, Jules Verne, I was mentioned earlier on, wrote about it three times, we're in 20,000 leagues uh, to the sea, which is some place where some of your containers end up, I know. Um, 4.6 billion euro turnover business, 66,500 people, uh, 140 countries we're operating in, so it's a genuine global provider. I'm not really here to talk about Bureau Veritas, and I certainly not looking to plug any of our products, but um, if you don't know about us, you know, I'm sure you can. We are a solution for most people, so that's fine. So, I, I wanted to raise the subject about sustainability and responsibility, and I suppose from that corporate social responsibility all sort of merges in. And um, it is a $64,000 question about corporate social responsibility is that. Um, it seems to be coming in and everybody's suddenly doing it, but there's a lot of uncertainty about it. So, first thing is, I'll just want to do that um, You'll hardly find a website at a leading corporation these days that doesn't on the front page somewhere have the word responsibility or sustainability. You know, I just went to Kerry's big Irish company, sustainability. The next one, I think I went to Unilever. Uh, sustainable living, went to a hotel group, IHG, corporate responsibility. It is always going to be there. Uh, so there's clearly some reason to, to that, and in organisations what we're finding, it is driven from the very, very top management. So it's clear that in the big organisations that are driving how our sectors operate, that it's very much at the fore of their thinking, corporate social responsibility. Um, the reasons, well, well certainly every, every leading organisation has made it priority, so if you offer someone down the chain, you're not going to get away with it, they're going to push you along this route, so you might get a push. Investors are increasingly making it a requirement. Uh, I was just on holiday with a director of a large building contracting company, and he was saying, "Well, of course we need this because we can't get we can't get the investment from the pension funds and what have you if we can't demonstrate these things." So your access to money, uh, customers are making it a requirement because they can't be associated with bad news. So. Now, if you're manufacturing or delivering for Tesco's or somebody like this, the last thing they need is somewhere along their supply chain an organisation employing illegals or having unsafe conditions and what have you. So increasingly they're driving this through. Governments have made it a priority since 1992. 
again. If you want to get state aid and things like this, increasingly you're looking for these things. And one of the reasons that these organisations are so key is because of the public and pressure groups on social media. Um, you know, I don't know if it's been reported in Ireland about a company in the UK called Sports Direct or um, the nice guy that owns Topshop. Um, you can very, very quickly damage the brand of your business. So, if you fail to have an adequate strategy that covers how your business operates, you are likely to get limited access to investment. Your access to the markets that you want, with sort of better companies at least, is going to be severely limited. Since accounting changes about 20, 30 years ago, where brand value is now on the balance sheet, your brands can be trashed within days in the modern era. You know, again, Amazon had a lot of damage done. Uh, Starbucks recently had damage done. Topshelf is having damage done because they get on the wrong side of pressure groups and social media. Um, Nestle, for example, who are a very ethical company, still have taunting universities about, about issues related to baby food. Um, years and years ago in Africa. Uh, social media is very unforgiving. So, you know, brands are vulnerable to attack. Obviously, these things end up affecting your share price. And the danger is if you threaten to damage the brand of your customers, they will not want to be associated with you. So, this is the reasons why these words appear right at the very fore of corporate websites because it is the main board of directors that are driving this discussion. Um, so, I just looked at the type titles sustainability and responsibility. Sustainability, there is no given definition. The UN has a definition there. Development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability for future generations to meet their own needs. There are other definitions, but it's essentially talking about an environmental claim. Responsibility, again, is even less well defined, but you're talking about the whole 360 degrees of your business. You're talking about the stakeholders within your business how you deal with staff, you're paying them fairly, what have you. Dealing with government, you're paying your taxes properly, you're not doing bribery, corruption, um, and um, quality rights and all these things. So it's the whole gambit of measures that protect how your company is perceived. So, it's impossible to give you all a strategy because every business is different. Um, some companies, by their very nature, will be very highly ethically driven and will want to really promote it. Other businesses just need to do enough so that they're keeping themselves at harm's way. I appreciate that. Um, different companies will have different focuses, but standard thing. The most important thing I would suggest is find out as quickly as possible what those gaps, those holes are that you have. Um, we do a lot of audits in this field and it, it can be quite frightening when you go in for the first time and it is just waiting for a lot of legal action or just waiting for an accident or just waiting uh, for an environmental slip up. Um, but every company's on a journey, so establish the gap, plan the gap, establish the opportunities, because this isn't just punishment. If you deal with it correctly, you're giving yourself um, a way of promoting the business. You know, it gives you access to markets, it gives you 
ways of talking. I'm involved in a tender that gets submitted today. There's a whole pre-qualification regime that we've had to complete about these things. Now, we feel very strong about that because we can say we do this, we do this, we do this. We built up a whole argument that covers a broad spectrum of the subject. So, we've got an answer for everything. Uh, do's and don'ts, I'm just going to be very quick about it. The number one thing is just make sure you're legal. Because if you, if you seem to be breaking the law and it comes out of the domain, you can be banned. Uh, don't be put off by your shortfall. Everyone's on a journey, nobody's perfect, even the big companies will come across issues. And sometimes just go up to it, get on with it, solve it. Yeah? Uh, don't overplay. A lot of companies I see start making grandiose claims which don't have the, the sincerity that's required. Yeah? You know, if, if you're a big oil guzzling company, well you're a big oil guzzling company, you know, you're trying to reduce things as best you can, you know, you're not, you're not saving the planet. Uh, do track your compliance, uh, it's, we're all on this journey. Uh, Corporate social responsibility is a long term commitment, it's not just a flavour. Again, companies who seem to do it for a short time and then drift, it shows. You need very long term objectives. It's, these are over the horizon objectives a lot of them. So, and communicate your success. You know? So once you start achieving, you have to be able to get it in a format that you can put over to you. Because there's so many ways you can use it. Um, and what a raft of things you can do. There's measures you can do totally in-house, so you don't have to employ Bureau of Veritas. A lot of companies do everything themselves, and that's fine. self audit yourselves, find your gaps. Self-develop your systems, come up with the stories that you want. Measure, report yourselves, your fuel savings, your fuel miles, people do it themselves. Um, and for large companies that have to do insurance reporting, you can report it yourself. However, a lot of people wanted an external advice. There's a second level, which is using consultants or what have you. And then there's the best practice. And Bureau Veritas, we're typically coming in at the best practice end. And that would be uh, audit, uh, things like SPITA, developing management systems like 14,000, 50,001, and so forth. So there's a million things you can be doing. Uh, I'll be walking around today if anyone wants to speak to me. Uh, Bureau Veritas, I've been around since 1828, so we're always going to be there for you. Thank you very much.